I was 12 in 1935. And I would go down and I would uh, often uh, talk to the workers who were installing the seats and that sort of thing. I was at the opening, we got tickets for the opening and uh, it was a Shirley Temple film. There was a sense of spectacle, you know, a sense of something important. And uh, not only that, people like, most people who went the pictures weren't, they weren't wealthy, you know, and some of them came from maybe very humble uh, origin, you know, and they go into that place with lovely carpet and floor and rich velvet seats, you know, and velvet curtains, you know. It was a, a lift up, you know, and then for three hours you can you can be in a, a world of glamour. It was always packed, mm-hmm. and when you get in and you were soaking sun outside in the rain, and when you get in, you had to stand around the wall until somebody moved, you know. The film's just capped rolling. You could have gone in halfway through the film, and you just sat and watched on and watched it and watched it and watched it until it came around to that bit again. And then, oh, this is where I came in, and you had to go up and left. Everybody went to the cinema. It was part of public life, you know. Dax's work was a combination of art deco and modernism. But there was this wonderful kind of nautical feel to it. If you notice, there's always circles, and there's many circles in the, in the windows at the strand, and between doors, and this and that and the other. You had those over on the Alpha, and th- they were like ocean liners, in a way. So standing uh, at that corner of the Belmont Road and the Hollywood Road, and you look across at the strand, and you can see the shipyard behind, and the strand looks like an ocean liner. It looks like a ship about to sail. It just is an invitation from across the street to go on a journey, to have an adventure. And every time I walk around that corner and see it, I can almost hear a ship horn. I can almost see the ocean above (laughs) in the far distance. And you kind of want to board this ship and go on a magical journey. And there's something so inviting about it. When I was growing up, um, in the 70s, colour TVs were like hen's tea. So people very much saw the world in black and white. But when you went to the cinema, you saw life in full colour. The Strand in the 80s, it created a, an energy source that I think an awful lot of people found great strength in. But maybe life is normal and can be normal. You know? I certainly did. I mean, I, I caught the buzz that just seemed to come off the building, the people, Ronnie, everybody was so enthusiastic. It was magical. There was an air of old fashioned glamour about it because Ronnie insisted that all the front of house staff would wear evening wear, dinner suits. So you'd be met with uh, bow ties and black jackets and, uh, and it was just off the community for the community. We jumped from one fire, which we never knew anything about, to learn the business and variety, then get into the cinema business. The queues were literally down the Hollywood Road. Everybody was then jumping from one queue to another whenever one screen filled up. It's always provided people with that experience, whether it's through cinema or whether it's through the shows that we're on and the kind of variety shows or whether now it's as an arts venue. It's always provided people in East Belfast with that sense of escapism and and access to arts. Within this space here, there's been laughter and (laughs) tears. You know, there's been love. There's been been arguments. (laughs) There's been all sorts of things have happened in this space. And just for a moment within that space, you can almost hear the whisper of, all the people who've been in there. 